everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey everybody, welcome back to God's Plan, Your Part. Today we are picking up in 2 Kings chapter 14 and 2 Chronicles chapter 25. So this is just again like a repeat story of the same events, uh, one in 2 Kings, one in 2 Chronicles. So we're talking about Amaziah, who would have been Joash's son, the king of Judah. So some pretty interesting like occurrences in these chapters of how Amaziah reigns, um, some of his, I guess, squabbles with Israel. <laughs> uh, so just like some some pretty crazy stuff. What do you got, Ryan Zook? Um, probably my favorite line in both the readings it happens in Second Chronicles 25, 2. So this is describing Amaziah. I'll start in verse 1. Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And listen to this. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, yet not with a whole heart. And as soon as the royal power was firmly his, he killed the servants who had struck down the king and his father. Um, just like, just like I think that um, that prophecy from Zechariah was like pretty significant, and it was just like how he said it. Yeah. I really like how the chronicler says this. Like he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not with his whole heart. And actually, I kind of thought that that was more in reference to the fact that he like killed off the people that Mm -mm. killed his dad, but it was more because he just again, like other kings before him, failed to take down the high places or failed to remove the high places that were in reverence to other gods. Those high places are really interesting. Yeah, I, what does I that wanna, mean? I, wanna, I, I don't know a lot about them, um, but they are a sticking point for so many people. And I want to spend some time thinking about that just <laughs> in my own time. In my, my mind, it's like the high places. This is just like a hard place to get to. Like, well, is it just like an annoying thing to have to go and take t- <laughs> <laughs> It's like, like, what does it actually mean? I don't understand. The, the text says he would have taken care of the high place. It was just so <laughs> far to walk. Uh, I wonder, I do not know this for sure, but you, you get the feeling over and over and over that these high places, like Solomon built some of them. Yeah. And really, we've only seen one king that actually tore them down, I think. I don't think so. There was one king who destroyed the high places. Really? Yeah, I forget who it was, but there was one king that did. Hmm. It. I believe it was Asa, maybe. Um, oh, don't hold me to that. But okay. what's interesting is that I wonder if it is something that is so prevalent in the culture and so um, built into what's going on. It's just very difficult to resist and very difficult to come against. So I do wonder. What's and this a is, present day? Example? This is just well, I don't know. This is that's why I want to think about this for a long time. Because it's interesting that the Bible says, hey, he followed the Lord. Like, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But there there was, like, this little area where he just didn't do it. And they all have that in common. Mm -hmm. They all have that in common. They're either completely evil or they refuse to tear down the high places. So they're they're almost certainly – I mean, we do not have high places today, but we almost certainly have things – like high places that we put today. In that same place, um, yeah. the, the the old school small church example is the piano that you can't move or the carpet <laughs> that you can't change. I'm not really even talking that stuff. I'm talking like the spiritual strongholds that exist today that we are not allowed to talk about. We are not allowed to confront. Um, there are always things like this that are built into cultures. And there are always things like this that are built into church cultures. I've been in a couple different church cultures. I do know what the high places are in those church cultures. <laughs> and you're not allowed to bring them up. You're not allowed to confront them. You're certainly not allowed to tear them down. But it does keep you from serving the Lord with your whole heart. There's no question. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. So anyway, we get into, I guess, what you could call the um, Judah-Israel yeah, there's an actual war. Yeah. Yeah. Which sounds so crazy because they're like, this is God's people here, broken into two different nations, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they're fighting each other. It's so crazy. And it actually starts out with just like a really stupid letter. Um, I just don't even understand it. Uh, hold on. Where is it? In Second Kings, he sends a letter or something like a letter. Where is it, Ryan? 
I lost it. Well, it basically says, like, come out and fight me, right? Yeah, but it's, like, a dumb way. Um, there is... He just says send word, but it says, like, it's, it's like, all, like... So it's not necessarily a letter, but he sent word, and it's, like, this weird little, like, riddle. <laughs> a thistle on Lebanon oh. sent to a cedar on Lebanon saying, give your daughter to my... Like, uh, what? That is somebody who's tiny said something to somebody who's big. It's That's what that is. So ridiculous. That is like, oh, like look at you, little thistle. I'm yeah. a cedar. Like get out of here. <laughs> Again, it sounds like a riddle. Like some from Alice in Wonderland. It's some 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 uh, ancient Israeli trash talk. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, so you have this like, hey, come fight me because I'm better than you situation, and it's so unfortunate because King. Let's see. Uh, da da da. Jehoash. Yeah. There he is. Sorry. There's this, so many okay, J names. So just to speak directly to this, this is this is confusing because Judah has a king, Joash. That is Amaziah's father. And he is known as Joash or Jehoash. But also... Wait, is, what? Yes. So also Israel has a king named Joash or Jehoash. Nuh-uh. You're not right. Yes. I am right. Nuh-uh. Okay. In the second year of Joash, the son of Jehoaz, king of Israel. Israel, not Judah. Right? Yes. Amaziah, the son of Joash. King of Judah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to leave that in. It's oh, uh <laughs> No, no. <laughs> so, this is just this is just a good illustration of what can be confusing. There is two Joashes. Uh, the, yes, they are that's also the known two. as Jehoahash, and they are reigning at very similar times. <sighs> so, at this point in the story, Joash is not the king of Judah. He is a different king of Israel, and he is at he's at war with Amaziah, who is also the son of Joash. <laughs> This is ridiculous. But what is important for you guys to see is that here, um, Joash is leading an army of Israelites into Judah, and they actually destroy part of the wall around Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is being attacked and ransacked by the people of Israel. This is significant um, because usually when we see, I think I think we've seen um, Egyptians ransack Israel, or sorry, uh, Jerusalem. We've seen, I think, some people from the north possibly ransack Jerusalem, and now it's the Israelites themselves. Yeah, that's bonkers. And so this is that slow, decay. careful decay um, that is taking root. And I believe they actually raided the temple and took some of the sacred things out of the temple. They took some of the gold and silver for themselves. So you have... People who should be obedient to the Lord, stealing They're from the own, Lord. Almost like stealing from themselves, yeah. Yeah, Not so it's it's so it's whatever. a it's a dark place. Um, it reminds me of the dark place at the end of Judges when they almost accidentally destroy the entire tribe of Benjamin because of this giant civil war. Now there is another war. It's not technically a civil war because at this point they're two different kingdoms. Um, but if we are tracking how the Lord is faithful to his promises. There's no question he's faithful to his promise. And there's no question that people so often fail mm -hmm. and are so often terrible at doing what the Lord has asked them to do. So we end the chapter specifically in Second Chronicles 25. It goes into detail about how Amaziah is um, killed, but it talks about how it's super unfortunate in verse 27, from the time when he turned away from the Lord, they made conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. I believe that's what that is. But they sent after him to Lachish, and they put him to death there. So it's like he turned away from the Lord. I'm not sure if it's like a, a Lord sovereignty. He, like, sent them after him. I'm not sure what the deal is. But, like, it was only then that he was put to death. But what's crazy is that they brought him back. And he was buried with his fathers in the city of David. So, shame on him for turning away. I guess you're good enough to make it in with the kings. <laughs> uh, just for extra credit, at the end of 2 Kings 14. So, this is 2 Kings 14, verse 25. Uh, it's talking about Jeroboam II. It says, He restored the border of Israel from Labo Hamath as far as the Sea of Arabah, 
according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke by his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet who was from Gath Hefer. Um, so this is, this is Jonah. This is Jonah. This is the yeah. guy that lives in the belly of the fish. Um, and this is this tiny little verse here, um, is one of the issues with people who believe that Jonah is like a fairy tale or like a parable. Um, the author of second Kings is quoting him as a real life prophet. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, you know, if, if this was in any other ancient text, we would see him as a real historical figure because, right. it's, but because it's in the Bible, we're not sure. Just <laughs> hilarious. Um, I don't believe that just to be clear. Like I'm, I'm saying like this shows that Jonah is real. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also shows, this is why we're going to read Jonah tomorrow. It helps us place Jonah chronologically um, because the writer of second Kings is quoting that Jonah had been giving a prophecy in Israel um, the, the majority of what we know about Jonah is not prophecies in Israel. So this is a prophet, uh, prophecy in Israel saying that Jonah would, um, in Jonah's day, the border of Israel would increase to the north because they would find success. A lot of people believe this is why Jonah was a little bit of like a pro-Israel prophet. Like he maybe prophesied these things and the people were like, wow, he loves us. God does love us. And that may be what caused Jonah to be in a little bit of an awkward place when God tells him to go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. So Jonah like enjoys prophesying in favor of Israel, but finds himself in a little bit of an awkward place prophesying prophesying in favor of the Assyrians, which is kind of interesting. Just like fun background, which I'm sure we'll talk about some more Mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh, when we dig into Jonah, which is probably one of my favorite books to talk about. So so what's a your part for today? Uh, the your part is simple. Serve the Lord with your whole heart. Yep. I was just going to oh, say, man. I wonder if he's How... there. And I think about this for myself. Like, guys, like when, when, when we were reading over these chapters, I'm thinking about my own life just as much as I'm trying to be encouraging about application for your life. So, man, I really hope that when somebody writes about my life, which will be never, um, <laughs> I hope what is uh, what people are able to say about my my life is that I serve the Lord with my whole heart. Mm-hmm. And I have I have strengths and I have weaknesses. And there are days that I feel like I really did that. And there are days when I'm pretty sure I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I just really want to strive to serve the Lord with my whole heart. And it is a goofy place to be. And it's a difficult thing to figure out. And I hope that you guys are trying to figure that out just encourage you and and pray that you will so we'll be back again tomorrow digging into jonah so we'll be here then in case we get swallowed by a fish see you then thanks so much for listening to god's plan your part if anything stuck out to you if you have any questions or if you'd like to receive a bible you can email us at god's plan your part at gmail.com Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.